Okay, so today we're going to talk a little bit about the element of space. Space is where, this is part of art, is how things are put, laid out um, when we're putting together art, making art. Where we put things in our pictures, where things are placed in order of closest to you, where's my fingers here, closest to you or closer to me and how things look differently. Like my finger looks ginormous when it's closer to the camera. Like I could be pinching my head when it's close to the camera, but it looks normal sized when it's by my face. Space has to do with where things are put. Okay, so I'm going to show you, uh, we're going to share, I'm going to share a, a page with you guys. Um, let me see if I can find what I need to share. Oh my goodness, where did it go? There it is, right in front of me. Okay, so it says space, another element of art is what you guys should be seeing right here. And um, I'm going to go change to another picture, and I'm going to see if I can get this to get go big so we can see this big. Let's see, because I haven't tried to do this yet. <gasps> Yay, it's letting me do this. All right. So here is what, um, this is a picture, obviously. This picture is of the Galveston Bay area with a... Um, pier walking. I'm standing on one end. I took the photograph looking away from the, the land and going around. But there is land way far over there, this little tiny strip. And so in the space of this whole picture, um, we've got uh, different parts. One part, let me see if I can find my pointer. Um, Oh, I changed slides. That's not what I wanted to do. Okay, you're going to have to watch my arrow. The part that's closest to you in the picture, that's it's this that looks the biggest, like this end of the, the, the pier, is called the foreground. The part that comes in the middle, like the, this farther away section of the pier, would be called the midground because it's in the middle of the picture farther away, way far away where this other piece of land is where it looks so tiny and where these clouds are rolling in, this would be called the background because it's far away. And this is, um, we use these terms foreground, midground, and background in um, uh, whether we're talking about landscape, which is what this is, this is a, a photograph of land, so it's a landscape, or whether we're talking about still life. And still life is um, a piece of art that is a picture about something, like a painting someone made of a bowl of fruit or a vase with flowers in it. That would be called still life. Let me change our slides. Okay, this is, an, this is that same pier, oh, go backwards, it's going to go super fast on me, okay. This is that same pier, you can see there's some people far away, the same land farther away from us, and um, again, the foreground is what's close, this piece of water and where the, the pier is close to us is foreground. Going away, this part of the pier would be in the midground, and the land and the sky far away from us is the background. This one is a super cool looking um, picture, if I can get all of it to show up for you. Um, this is out uh, near the Grand Canyon, and we're looking at the river that flows, was it the Colorado at the bottom of the Grand Canyon? Um, closest to us in this picture. If you look at the part of the picture that would be closest to the person who took the picture, that would be down here in this piece of road that kind of just disappeared. This is the foreground. Get it to disappear again. Just a second. Now you can see the road again. That's the foreground. The hills that are going 
this way and this way are the mid ground right here and then where the river and these mountains are and then the sky all of this is happening in the background so the foreground is the road the mid ground are these hills and then the background is the river and this far mountain and sky here's another desert picture um, that I took um, you can see way 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 off in the distance are mountains that's the that's the background the ridge right here that my arrow is going over this ridge right here that's in the middle this is our mid ground this piece of um, desert brush and rock and some of the stuff up here at the front that you can see of the dirt let me get my arrow out of the way um, that part of it is the um, is the foreground so where this it looks like there's a little bit of a path and some brush and some rocks that's all up closer to the person who took the picture me and so that's the foreground the middle ground is the part of the land that you can see details and the background is what's fuzzy and the mountains back there are kind of fuzzy and purplish looking right <gasps> This is a bridge that's near the Hoover Dam in Nevada. Um, and it's just another really good example of something being in the foreground, in the midground, and then where the background is. Um, in the foreground, you can see that when I took this picture, I was standing on the side of a road, turned around looking backwards. And in the foreground, closest to me is this um, railing right here that would keep people from um, climbing down this little mountain this railing and where um, my arrow is waving is the closest part of it to me that's the foreground so the road and the railing is the foreground we start getting into the mid ground when we look where the bridge and this middle piece of a mountain is for this this is a road cars go over and then the background are the mountains way far away that are starting to change color in the sky way far away. That's the background. And then I have one more picture of a friend of mine um, looking over the Grand Canyon. I took the picture. I was standing oh, behind the camera, obviously, behind her taking the picture. Um, the foreground is this piece of rock and where she's sitting. And, and this woman is the foreground. The midground would be this part of the Grand Canyon that she's looking at that's closest to her. And then the background would be the canyon that's farther away in the sky. Um, something else, last week when we were doing, using lines to draw our mountains, and we're drawing our lines in the shape of the mountains, now you can see a real picture where you can see where the mountains are and how they look like there are lines in them. So now you can see why things we drew were bumpy and why things we had were bumpy lines because those bumpy lines, as you can see my arrow bunching around, um, were to show lines in the dirt or in the sediment, the layers of rock, just like what you would see out here in the desert in these uh, in the uh, the Grand Canyon and the layers of rock that are going down okay I think that's my last picture oh nope one more this is called um, Joshua tree it's a type of cactus that lives in a desert and there's some other scrub I think it's desert sage I'm not sure that's close to us and this one's tricky the foreground is this bush or these bushes that are closest to the photographer the midground are the Joshua trees that are here in the middle. And then the background is where the mountains are hidden in the back and the blue sky. So the reason, and I can exit, that's my last one. The reason we're talking about this, the distancing, um, and where things are put, is because we're going to make a picture. Um, and we're going to think about where we're putting things in the picture. I'm going to shut this part down and move to my other 
theme that you can see me draw on. You can't see me draw right here. Um, and when we get there, we're going to draw a picture where we have a foreground, a midground, and a background. All right, so we were talking about the element of space and how um, what space is is where things are and how they sit in your artwork. Um, if we're doing a landscape, space is uh, something that has to be done with that is the foreground, the midground, the background, background being what comes behind, middle, midground is what's in the middle, foreground is what's closest looking to you. Um, in a still life, it's the same thing. If I were to set up this little basket of um, succulents as a um, still life, whatever is the closest in the picture, like say I had this in here, and maybe there's this little piece that's fallen on the ground, and maybe way off back here there's something else, like, you know, a picture or something. Well, the foreground would be what's closest to the camera. The midground's what's in the middle, and the background, and the way this camera is showing would be the white paper back here. And so you need to, to, to think about how things are placed or put, and how things are um, laid out in a pleasing way on your paper when we're making art. So to practice foreground, midground, and background, we're going to do a landscape. Um, along with the landscape we're going to do, we're going to use some of the techniques that we had last week, and I'll review those as we're going over this. Um, I want you to draw on your paper. You can use paper, plain paper if you have it. If you have your um, um, a sketchbook, you can open your sketchbook up to where there's two pages touching that are blank, like this, and use the whole space and draw across the whole space, okay? Because we need a piece of paper that is about the same size as a regular piece of paper, okay? I'm going to use this instead of the book just because it shows up easier. Also, you're going to use a pencil to do your drawing. After we've used a pencil, you can go back and use either color pencils or um, or markers to um, put in. Combination is even better, outline with the markers, color with the color pencils to put in your layering. I'm going to start with the pencil just, just so you can see what the first line looks like. Then I'm going to go over with my marker and the rest of what I'm going to draw is going to be with marker um, because sometimes pencil doesn't show up very well on paper when we're filming um, and I'm not certain how it's going to show up now. So foreground, we're going to draw a desert scene. I like desert scenes. I think they're interesting with the way the rocks are tumbled when there's um, when we're in a deserty area with mountains and such like what I showed you in the photographs earlier. So I'm going to make my foreground my foreground is the is part of the land that's kind of closest to us. It could be where I'm standing and taking this picture. And so I'm going to use a bumpy line to make my foreground. Then I'm going to make my midground. That's what's going to live in the middle space of this drawing. And in my midground, um, I think I want to put a, a piece of rock or mountainish area that is like an arch. An arch is something that you has a hole in it basically. And so this is going to look kind of odd, like a big blob, but wait till we get through it and it won't look so blobby. Um, inside my arch is where the, the, the rocks kind of go in a weird way and they're bumpy. You know, and I don't like a spot, so I'm going to take a little piece off. Usually I don't do that, but my pencil just didn't do what I wanted it to. Let's remove that. And let's make this a little chunkier this way. Ah, that's better. So this looks kind of like a, an, a, a rock with a hole in the middle of it, which is basically what an arch is. 
And then behind that, we're going to have um, maybe some mountains living back in this area. And they're going to be kind of just like they're far away. Might even put one right here. Oh, that's bigger than I wanted. My goodness, Miss Tomlinson. That's probably better. And this is going to come on over. Because this is a hole that you can see through, this is going to kind of come behind it. And we'll put another little mountain. I'm going to come back behind and maybe do some more way far away. Okay. Just because it's interesting. Now, um, I'm going to go back over what I just did with a marker just so these lines pop a little bit and it's easier to see. Um, but I don't think I'm going to go ahead and use a black marker. I think I'm going to pick a marker that's going to be kind of ground colored um, so that it, it looks like the ground I want it to be. Um, a little more realistic. And I'm going to go over my lines. Going to go over my lines in a bumpyish way. Make certain my hand is making this look kind of rocky and bumpy. And don't worry if you are going over your pencil lines and you have like a pencil line showing up here. When I get done going over all my pencil lines, I'll take my eraser and then just erase what little lines are showing. Okay. I'm going to outline the inside of this rocky. So there's my mid-ground, my arch. I'm going to go ahead and outline, go over my foreground bumpy line here. And I'm going to get a different color for my mountains because my mountains are farther away. So I don't really want them to look like this brownish dirt color. I want them to look like they're way, way, way far away. So I'm going to use kind of a purple color because sometimes, and in the photographs I showed you, if you want to go back and look at them on the video, you can. Some of the mountains that are far away look kind of purplish and hazy because there's clouds and dust and all sorts of things between where we live where we're, and where they live far away from us. So I'm going to go over. And I know it looks kind of odd thinking purple. But when we go in and shade it, it will look good. And I'm going to go over both mountains. I'm not going to worry about this extra piece of pencil line I have. I'll erase it later. So now I've got my foreground, my midground, foreground, midground, background all outlined. So the next step we're going to do is what we were doing um, last week, where we were making lines to show the direction of how the rocks and things on the mountains went. I'm going to keep with the purple while I'm working on this one. Um, so that uh, you can see how this starts to look like it's far away. I'm going to make the shape of this one. And I'm going to make it bumpy. And because it's far away, I want my lines to look close. So I'm going to use the thinnest part of my pen to make these look skinny lines. And try to make them look bumpy and try to make them look like the line I drew first. All right, so there's one. 
I'm going to come over here and do this one, and I'm going to follow its shape. Then I'm using the top part of my pen and the pointiest part possible to make my line as thin as possible. If I wanted a thicker line, I could turn it sideways and make it thicker. But a thin line is what I want. And we want it to look like there are layers of rock that are different colors and it kind of shows how the rocks are going. I'm going to come over and do this back side over here. And we've got this little bit right here. And then I'm going to keep doing this one. And I'm changing the direction a little bit over here just because everything doesn't always go in the same way. Okay. And then this one, we're going to, I'm going to do an extra little line here to make it look really 3D. And this is going to go up and down in this shape. And then this one, I'm going to bring down in the opposite way and make it come from top to bottom, it's kind of wavy vertically to make it look like it's coming together. Now, this next section that's a little bit closer to us, um, I think I'm gonna see if I have another color that might work a little better. A, a slightly different purple. I don't know how different it's gonna be because these are two different brands, but we're experimenting. Um, and what, the, what we do next is come to the mountains behind and we're going to give our mountain some chunkiness and some direction. Some of this mountain, might, right, like right here, might come on down. Yeah, this is a good darker one. Like so. Um, so that things are falling. Rocks are kind of falling maybe in a landslide and coming down. So this is just going to help give us some dimension, texture. Show us the bumpiness and the shape. And I'm going to go the shape of the line I just drew. I'm going to start at the top. Again, I'm using the thinnest part of my marker to make my line thin. And the next one I'm going to draw, I'm still going to make just as bumpy, but I kind of want to make it thin, and then I want to make them a little bit wider at the bottom. This is farther away, so they're closer. This is closer to me, so they're wider apart. And then I'm going to keep adding in on my mountains until they are all done. And make them as bumpy as you can. That one kind of got a little straight on me, but that's okay. Because I'm doing this straight with the marker, I can't go back and fix it. So if you're still using a pencil and you're doing this, it gives you the opportunity to go in and fix some things. If you went ahead and switched over to marker, that's okay. Sometimes you just have to live where there's a mistake and don't get stressed about it. So I would keep doing this, this next piece here where there's mountain. Still, I might make another line and then make this one change and go more in this direction. And I'm going to keep working until all of these are filled in. Then I'm going to move to my midsection and come back over here and add lines to it. And then I'll come to the front. I'm going to pause the video for a minute. Um, and then when I come back, I'm going to have more of this done so you can see it. You can see I've put sandy color the orange is the closest to a sand i've got yellow might show up better on y'all's yellow has a hard time showing up sometimes here um i drew a little cactus over here just because i thought it would be interesting like thinking about space and placement we've got our arch here and some mountains here and i thought you know i needed one more thing in the space to make it look interesting so I added this. Our artist we were looking at last week, who was our inspiration artist, Christian Reinfeld, 
put circles in her sky. And so she makes them about the same size going across. And then she goes back through and colors them in. So as you're putting your stuff together, come through, put circles in, come back and add more if you need to in places. Keep going. Once you get everything drawn, I finished putting all the circles in so I have my sky drawn. Then you can either, one of two things, use um, color pencils or markers. For my sky, I would come back with my marker and color my sky dots, sky circles in with them, all of them. I don't have time to color them all in here for you to see, but color them all in and then across the board. And then down here in the body of your um, picture, you can pick, get um, color pencils and color things in to make it look more realistic. This is kind of a sandy color here. It's hard to see probably in the middle of the orange, but I would come in and color in my sand all the way across. I would get a color that would work for my cactus and color my cactus in. And if I'm using color pencils when I'm coloring, my marker and the details I put in with my marker is still gonna show. You can still see the dots through the green. Um, for the this land mass with the arts, arch use different color browns you know, come through do follow some of your lines like this is one set of color one color brown and i'm using following one set of lines then i might get a different color brown i think that's darker and come in and add some darker somewhere to make it look um, like the Grand Canyon did, you know, when we saw the different layers of colors. For my Purple Mountains Majesty way back in the background, um, find, this is probably not the right purple, we'll see how close it comes, oh, it comes close. Find a, a purple that will work to the per for the Purple Mountains back here. This one works for the far away space. So I'm adding some purple through here. I might put a darker color purple closer to me on these, this darker spaced area and color in your mountains. Mix them up a little bit if you wanted to add a little bit of extra highlight, a color that's slightly different. And so come through and color in, color the whole thing. I want to see your finished piece this one's not finished. I still need to add color with my color pencils and color in my dots in my sky. So I want to see your finished piece. Take a picture of it. Send it to me when you're done. Thank you so much.